All right, Dan, thank you so much for taking out some time to chat with us. No problem. So um, let me get started right in. Um, you played Ram and Tron, obviously. Can you kind of reflect on the film's legacy over the last near 40 years? Uh, it's a surprising legacy. It's something I completely uh, didn't necessarily expect because at, uh, when it came out, it was not the smash hit that we thought it would be. No. We thought it would disappear, go gently into that good night. Uh, it did well, mind you, apparently, but it didn't uh, explode in, I don't know, for years. And all of a sudden, I remember every 10 years or so, there's a huge Tron resurgence, which means that the Tron fans always existed. And obviously, now that we have the internet and we are user friendly, <laughs> um, they were right. Um, these guys were prescient and they were right. And the internet is massively filled with bad guys now. <laughs> I mean, it is, they are rampant. They are everywhere and they infect our machines, our uh, connections every single day. We have a world where people are reinventing reality using the internet nefariously. Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely stunning, and we need, uh, we need, inter we need uh, Facebook to disappear. I mean, it's it's shocking that they're allowing blatant criminality to appear on the internet. The most powerful formats are doing it. They're not doing it themselves, but they're permitting it. They're allowing it. Twitter and, and it, Facebook. It, well, if you look at Facebook and you're looking at all of the lies that are being permeated by the Trump administration and their Russian counterparts, and their uh, uh, conspiracy liars. Um, and uh, and I, I, look, I'm a liberal. I get liberal lies also sent by Russian trolls. Their purpose is to divide and conquer, and it's worked. And it's stunning and embarrassing and horrific and comic at the same time. And if people saw Tron, they would know that it's actually happening. Yeah. <sighs> It's just crazy to think we're talking about this film near 40 years later. I think that's unbelievable. No, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. So what was it like on the set? Tell us, I mean, you know, it looks cool in the movie, but obviously, you know, what was it like filming this movie? Uh, the closest thing I could say is, um, uh, I, I don't know, everybody was in a school play, I'm assuming, um, just like everybody played in mural sports or played in you know, gym class. Um, it was like uh, being children in a big playground. Um, we were on a big black box set in the middle of a sound stage, and we were wearing uh, our pajamas. Sure. And the drum storyboard to act out these cartoons for us. And, and then there were times where he would just roll the camera and give us directions and really? just say, make big eyes. <laughs> and we actually did that, and it was ridiculous. Um, we had a lot of fun. We got along great. Um, and it was also Disney. And Disney at that time, and it still is, is, is the major leagues. Those guys know how to treat their artists. They treat you like kings. Um, we are in a bizarre Disney land, you know, the Disney studios in, Holly, in uh, Burbank. Yeah. You know, down Disney Lane and uh, uh, Goofy Lane and Mickey Avenue. I mean, it's just bizarre. Um, but it was the top of the line. And we knew we were playing major league sports. Um, but very silly. That's wild. Yeah, I, uh, speaking of Disney, I recently saw an episode of a show called Prop Culture. And on the show, they uncovered a costume from Tron. And I wanted to talk about your costume. What was that like? You mentioned pajamas. It's tight. It's tight. <laughs> it's a leotard, a full body leotard. You know, I still have mine in my, uh, in LA, I have a house in, in the uh, basement of my house in LA, somewhere mold infested, I'm assuming, because I haven't seen it in 40 years, but I know it's there. And, uh, but you know, that was 40 pounds ago, <laughs> but they're tight. <laughs> they stretch and they're just hand painted. They're just hand painted tights. It looks so cool in the movie. You think it's like this cool suit, you know? Well, it is a cool suit because we were in, pr I was in good shape. That was <laughs> then. Cindy Morgan was in really good shape. Um, 
Yes. And uh, David Warner hasn't changed at all. He, the tights wouldn't fit him now either. <laughs> he was too skinny for tights. <laughs> He's still too skinny for tights. Oh, it's so great. fun. That's great, man. You know, it's funny. I never realized that you were credited also as the popcorn co-worker. Yeah. I had no idea until recently. I was like, I had, I can't believe I missed that. Yeah, that, was, that wasn't in the script. They just brought me in one day and said, Dan, come in. We're going to have you walk through this and we'll see what happens. It just can't hurt. And That's so we did funny. it. Yeah, and I, was, and I was named Walter Disley. Really? Yeah. yeah. So then, you know, how did you end up reprising your role in Tron the next day as Roy Kleinberg? How did that come about? I got a phone call. Really? And, yeah, and I, was, I said, yeah, why wasn't I in Legacy? I said, um, but... I'm happy about that. It was, uh, you know, it was good. I mean, and Bruce and I were ready to do the next one. And um, I was expecting the next one, but I should have known it's going to take 10 years. Sure. <laughs> or 20 years. It might be 20 years. Who knows? There's another one. Uh, I'm sure there's another one coming. I'm, I'm sure there will it, be. Especially it could be 10 to 20 years. Um, you know, we'll see. Over here in Disney, we have the new Tron ride opening up in. Oh, Magic. I've heard of I've heard about that, yeah. I've been watching him build it daily, and wow. it's coming along pretty well. So once that opens, I'm sure we're going to hear an, a new resurgence for another Tron film, guaranteed. I hope so. Uh, it's not that I need it. It's just that, you know, look, I haven't left my apartment in, like, <laughs> months in the middle of Manhattan. It. So it's like, uh, yeah, anything. Let's, just get me out of the house. <laughs> That's great, man. And with the... Uh, um, you know, yesterday they released the new trailer for the new Bill and Ted. Yeah. Pretty exciting. I guess, can you, you know, you played Billy the Kid in Excellent Adventure. Yeah. Um, that must have been a blast. Can you kind of reflect on that role for us? Well, it was uh, generic cowboy number one. Uh, so um, I got the part. I auditioned as generic cowboy. And then uh, I started to research Billy the Kid and, and but wouldn't it be great if I were like really like Billy the Kid? And so I walked in with twitches and because he was like syphilitic and he was, uh, he was not normal. He was not a hero. He was a toad. <laughs> and I did a take as Billy the Kid, the, you know, the twitching toad. And the director said, cut. <laughs> Dan, what happened to generic cowboy? Uh, and that came right back. Um, Billy, that, uh, Bill and Ted was so much fun. It was another one of those, um, nobody took it seriously. We all knew it was a silly movie. Everybody had fun. And the magic of Bill and Ted is Keanu and Alex. And it's just, that was it. The, I mean, it's one of those movies where you're standing there and you're going, oh, I see. Oh, it, yeah, of course, throw them the ball. And um, they were just, they, it's their chemistry. That was the magic of it. Yeah, I was going to ask, what was it like working with them? I'm sure that yeah, must have been intense. No, it's not. It was just playful. These guys were like, they were so committed to being absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> and they were lovable, deeply lovable. And I don't think if you, had a diff if you had a different cast, it would not have been, I mean, especially those two, you would not have had the same feel of the movie. It was really about their sense of um, joy. Yeah. I've had the pleasure of interviewing both of them over the yeah. years. And they're both fantastic people. I love them. And both. they haven't changed. I, I, they, they have not changed. I promise you that nothing about them has altered. It's going to it be. Can't right. be. It's impossible, um, because they are authentic sweethearts. That's amazing. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. But then you know you're also a part of the whole Trekkie world. Yeah. You know what was it like playing Dr. Arador in in the Next Generation Star Trek: The Next Generation? Yeah, I did Next Generation and Voyager, the same character, and um, a fantasy dream come true. You know, yeah, uh, that's a dream come true to get beamed up and um, uh, too much fun. I mean, it was just so ridiculous because you, you're being beamed up. Yeah. You keep forgetting that actors are, we watch this stuff too, you know, it's like <laughs> we argue and only we, we have a better shooting percentage. It's better basketball players. You know, it's like, you know what I mean? We are, everybody could do that part. They, we just do it better. Um, and, <laughs> but it's still, you're, you're, you're getting beamed up and that's pretty stunning. It's, and I'm, I'm there with a big grin on my face. They're going, why are you grinning? I'm getting beamed up. 
Aragorn wouldn't grin. He yes, he would. <laughs> he did. So then, he would. so you went from from the next generation. How did you end up kind of reprising that role in Voyager? A uh, phone call. Later? They called me seven years later. Seven years. They said you would seven they, years. You play the same role. Yeah. Are you alive? I think they said. <laughs> um, and I was alive. I was working. It's just sort of like, call my agent, guys. You know, there's working actors have a really weird um, route in this industry. They think you're dead because you're not Jeff Bridges starring in a movie. They don't see you're in movies. You're in TV shows. You're just not getting publicized because we we don't make enough money to even hire a publicist. So it's, um, <laughs> you know, I was still working. I was working a lot, but they called me at home. Thank goodness. And found me. That's and, awesome. uh, yeah. So what? So how long did it take to apply your Frankie makeup? How long did that? Take? Oh, that's at least six hours in the morning. You're in it. You're in it like four in the morning, and at ten a.m. you start shooting, and you shoot till eight at night, and then another two, three hours to get this stuff off. But here's the good news for everyone who needs to know: um, there's such a thing as overtime, and <laughs> then double time. And turnaround, if you don't have a 12 hour turnaround, you get another day's pay. So when I, my episode of, uh, one episode of Voyager is basically a BMW. That's epic, dude. So complain all you want. <laughs> I'm, I'm said, I don't want to leave. Can I come back tomorrow? <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's ridiculous. It's, it, it's the best. I mean, I, I knew guys that were, you know, you'd meet the, the cast, the regulars, the Armin Shimmermans who were doing this a lot. And they, I think it got tiring for them, but they were smart enough uh, to realize how blessed they were, how lucky. That's fantastic, yeah. man. That is really great. Yeah. And I'm a big fan. This is a silly question. I'm a big fan of, uh, of Ghoulies 3, you know, uh, when they go to college. Yeah. Is that a fun shoot to do? I don't even know what I was in. I never saw a script. I got a phone call. These are like, I mean, I, you're calling everything that people offered me. It's just really weird. Um, but uh, the Ghoulies 3, they, I got a phone call. said, uh, these guys know your work. They want you to do this thingy. They're just adding a prologue that didn't exist before. Yeah. I show up, and they glue a bunch of Ghoulies to me. <laughs> and I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm just screaming and doing this and flushing myself down the toilet. It was hilarious. It was uh, a long day, but there was no script. They just tell me what to do, talk me through it, and um, and then now try this because it was being made up as we went along. Wow! Um, and so, and I've never seen the movie. Really? I've never seen what I did. I know nothing. It's a stupid movie, but I love it. It's one of those I, movies you just you know laugh at. Yeah, and apparently I've worked with some of the Ghoulie guys uh, later on. They said, Dan, we were in a movie together. I said, we were. <laughs> it was, it was, <laughs> I knew nothing. I, I, I still don't know much about it. Oh, that's cool, man. It's still, yeah. that's awesome. And I'm also a big Kansas fan. How did you end up oh, getting man. in two of their music videos? Fight Fire with Fire and everyone. Yeah, had, phone call. My friends. That so was phone a phone. Call? Yeah, that was weird. The Fight Fire with Fire was the first one. They offered me that. And it was like, look, MTV, I was the first actor in an MTV movie. Really? The, an MTV video that was instead of the band. That's incredible. I was the, I, that was the first time it had happened because Kansas are all these shy dudes, you know. None yeah. of them are what you would call a rock star. So they wanted to tell a story and use someone as um, instead of them. Sure. And I was the first person that did that. And then it started to roll and they started to get movie stars sure, sure. start doing these videos um yeah that was yeah that was um yeah that That's was the wild. 1970s yeah <laughs> it's actually the early 80s but um yeah i love kansas man that's great video great song yeah. yeah and the second one uh the video apparently did really well in mtv so they offered me a little thing to show up in the second video that's cool yeah that's really cool, man. That's good yeah. stuff. That's another, that's another great song. Everybody's My Friend. That's another great one. So. Yeah, yeah. I like them a lot. Really nice, really nice guys, I got to say. I've had a chance to interview one of the guys from Kansas, too. They're awesome people. Yeah, good. 
good. And you also, lastly, um, you, you also have a background in theater. Can you tell us about that side about you? Well, yeah. Well, I started out in the theater in New York in the 1970s. I grew up in New York and went. And uh, my first job was on, first jobs were on stage. And I was picked up, I was doing a play in New York when I was flown to LA to screen test for a, a, a TV movie called Suds Lonega, and which started my career. Um, and 10 years ago, I came back to New York after four, 30 years away. I lived in LA for 25 years, yeah. spent five years in the South Pacific, then flew back to New York because my parents got sick. And while uh, I was here taking care of them, both of them, um, uh, I got back into the theater and have done plays in Minneapolis and in Pittsburgh and, and in Connecticut and in New York City for the past 10 years. I've done what, eight plays. Really? Wow. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, it's, yeah, I love it. It's wonderful. It's where I came from. Um, I'm not coming back to the theater because it's because I'm here in New York yeah. and that's what's here. You know, I've shot TV shows as well, but, um, that is really what's going on here. Um, so while I'm here, I'm, I'm saying, uh, you know, promoting it, pushing it. That's I'm incredible, here. man. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's, that's all the questions I got. I appreciate Beautiful. you giving out some time, Dan. That means a lot. Oh, you're very welcome.